Welcome to Tarpon Springs! sponges in the early 1900s. Let's go! This town has a distinctly Greek feeling, but it's because all of the Greeks immigrated here when they found out there were sponges here. They had a unique style of diving that they brought down here to Florida so that they could harvest the sponges from the surrounding areas. Ooh, they're soft, but also bristly. And they're squishy. They're so cool. You got the tickets, you go on first, she's waiting for you right there. Later, later. Live on the island. Right? All year wrong. Excellent. Okay. Thank you. Got it. You think they're really gonna go underwater and get it, bring up a sponge? I think so. I hope so. We do appreciate you coming along with us today because we've been doing this going on 98 years. Okay? My grandfather started this back in 1924. Okay? So we've been here just a little while. Now, the boat that we're on today, and this other boat, the Anastasi over here, these are the last two traditional style sponge boats to be built here at Tarpaulin. This one was built in 1989. That's the sister boat to this, made from the mold of this one. Uh, that was built right after. This whole length of dock here, all of these boats that you see tied up here, are working commercial sponge boats, okay? Oh, wow. The city has reserved this whole length of dock here for these guys so that they'd have some place to be able to unload their sponges. So they started using this type of diving suit about the mid-1860s. So around 1870, we discovered some sponges off the coast of Tarpon here. Because all along the coastline north of us is very shallow water and it has a lot of sponge in these areas. So what they'll do now is they'll take a knife, they'll slice across the base of the sponge, leave about a quarter of an inch thickness or so of that base attached. That will skin over and then begin to grow back. First one is our wool sponge. This is what the wool sponge looks like. This That's one here we call like the yellow sweet. sponge. This is called a vase you can't sponge. It looks those. like a vase. you got to be careful with them because when they're dry like them, but if and you I soak them in water, you like put it in water or something, you can it gently spread them out to whatever shape on it. This is the wire sponge, and it's much firmer than any of the other ones. You clip some off the sponge. You're going to put a bowl under it and you water it. One here, the finger sponge. Now the finger sponge here, when we find this one on the bottom, it's actually a bright orange color, okay? The diver's putting on a suit that's about like the one they would have worn in the early 1900s. Then he's gonna go underwater and show us how they would have harvested sponges. Hold on, hold on. And his suit looks awesome. crazy. Now, these divers, when they're working out there in the golf, they walk on the, on the bottom. They don't swim, okay? We don't use scuba gear. The suit that the diver's about to put on weighs 18 pounds. The shoes each weigh 12 pounds, and the chest piece, the shoulder piece, weighs 30 pounds. Then we have his helmet, which is made out of copper, brass, and glass, and those would weigh about 38 pounds. So what we do is, before we put the helmet on, we're going to slip two lead weights over his shoulders and weigh about another 70 pounds, making that a total of 172 pounds, not including the diver's own weight. You see his suit puffing over there? suit fills up with air and then right, jumps off and then he has a way to hit a valve in his helmet. There you go. Head. So he's going to float along there and make sure everything's good before going down. When he's ready to go down, he'll start tapping that valve with his head. All that this guy has is his rope to communicate with the people on the boat. Okay, so he's walking on the bottom now, okay? The divers, when they walk on the bottom out there, will typically walk at about a 45 degree angle to the bottom, on their toes and against the current, thrusting forward as they go along. So here for demonstration purposes, he only went about 12 feet deep, but when they go out in the bay about 10 miles from here, they will go 100 to 200 feet deep. All right, so notice there, as he's walking along, he's kind of twisting his body from left to right, side to side. The reason they do that is so they can scan the area around them. Just turning their head inside the helmet doesn't really give them enough view of the area they're working, even though he's got those little windows on the side. So he kind of twists and turns as he searches for his budget. Okay, there it is. Now he's got one there. Get out of that suit so you guys can 
watch that. <laughs> what I do is make how we clean the sponges. What we do is to get all that black skin off of there, the animal matter off the sponge. What we'll do is we'll lay the sponges on the deck when they get back in the boat. We'll stack them two high, three high, four high, whatever we need. And we will cover them with a heavy burlap material or large blankets. We'll also separate them by different size ranges and different qualities within those size ranges. So you'll have several piles of sponges. Well, that's so funny. The buyers will come around and inspect the sponges. Right there, Ben, about a piece of paper with a load of paper. Today we're in Tarpon Springs. The What language are they speaking? Greek. You hear them speaking Greek? Yeah, it's really cool.